What's going on everybody? Brandon from Burns Lawn Care. Thank you again for tuning in for another episode. And look at what I got here. So guys, what we have here is a Kohler 20 horsepower engine. This came out of an old Walker mower that I had. Uh, the mower was pretty much given to me and I robbed pots off it and then uh, ended up selling it. And I kept the engine as a spare to someday rebuild it. Well, I've never rebuilt an engine before, um, so I figured why not learn? A buddy of mine, Ken from KLC, uh, put up some videos of him rebuilding this engine on YouTube, so I checked it out, and I learned a lot, honestly. Um, so, I, you know what, I finally worked up the courage to dive into this and take it apart. So that's exactly what I did. I took the entire engine apart. Um, now also, guys, this motor has been rebuilt before. Um, there was a piece of masking tape on the top of the valve cover saying that it had been rebuilt at 2,000 hours. So, as you can see, the, the silicone that they used around the outer perimeter of the uh, crankcase here. So initially what I thought happened was they, they just did a ring job on it. Which was normally what people do when they rebuild these. They just put uh, new piston rings on and... Uh, slap it back together however I started cleaning these up these pistons and look at what that says right there 025 this is an oversized piston that's not good news um, so this tells me that this this cylinder I mean this block has been bought out 25 thousandths it's 25 over so I started sticking my fingers down the down the cylinder to check for scores or any imperfections, and I act and I actually found one. Um, it, there's a little bit of a groove in the cylinder. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. There's a little bit of a groove. That is not good news. Um, the crankshaft here appears to be in good shape. It does doesn't have any scoring, but it's got some wear marks. I took the cam and I started looking at the cam. You can see the, the lobes of the cam have some wear on it. So guys, I think this motor may be on life support. I don't know if this motor is going to be rebuildable or not. I've heard from what I've read, um, the most you can bore them out is 30 thousandths. But with 25 thousandths already being taken off it, I'm not sure if there's any more meat in the cylinder walls to bore it again. So that's where I'm at with this. Another thing I found when I took the crankcase off, uh, this oil pickup filter, look at it, it's loaded with RTV um, silicone. That's not good, that'd have to get fixed. So when I took this motor apart, I, uh, I put all the essential parts in a Ziploc bag. Like here's one complete cylinder head assembly. Um, here's the other complete cylinder head assembly. There's the starter. You got the flywheel here, the air cleaner. Um, intake manifold, I took the whole thing off with the carburetor. Um, the carburetor will probably end up either being rebuilt or replaced. So I have all my parts here, right in the back of the MTSD. And hopefully if I can rebuild this engine, it's going to power this. So guys, with the condition of this engine being really unknown and seeing how it has been rebuilt before and uh, machined, I need to take this block over to my friend Ken from KLC who has a better understanding of these engines than me. And uh, I'm going to have him look at the cylinder walls to see if they're, they're in good shape. I'm going to bring him the old pistons and see what's going on there. I know, there were, I know that the piston rings did fail because this thing was burning oil like you wouldn't believe. Um, as you can see here, the soot on the top of the piston is a clear giveaway that oil had entered the combustion chamber. Um, so 
I'm not sure what's gonna happen with this motor. Like I said, I have a feeling that it might not be rebuildable, but if Ken says that, you know, give it a shot, that, that's exactly what we're gonna do. Uh, this would be a multi-video um, process here. I can't rebuild the engine in one, one video for you guys. But my question for you guys out there is, has any of you guys rebuilt an engine, um, a small engine, that has been bored before. I'd like to know. Um, especially to the point of this one. This one's been bored uh, 25 thousandths. Um, I'd like to know if you guys have been able to pull it off successfully. So that's that's a question for you guys. Leave it in the comments down below. I'd really appreciate it. Hey right, guys, so we're on our way to Cape Cod to see Ken and have him check out all our engine parts and see what's going on with them. I got them all loaded up here in the truck. Got them all in bags ready for him to inspect um, hopefully all goes well but we'll see you when we get there Right, guys so we're here at my uh, buddy Ken's shop and we got some good news uh, Ken went through the entire motor real quick he looked at the cylinders and he used a feeler gauge on them with the old uh, rings just to see what the end gap was and everything appears to be good so what Ken's gonna do for me is he's gonna hone the cylinder for me because I don't have a hone and he's gonna get him a nice cross hatch going inside the cylinder so when we put the new rings on they got something to seat to. It's very, it's a very important step when rebuilding an engine. You got it. Listen to you. You're a pro. Yeah. What's up, guys? This is Ken, great friend of mine. He's always helped me out. If you guys haven't checked out his channel, check it out. It's KLC Lawn Care on YouTube. Yep. Excellent, excellent channel. You guys will learn a lot. KLC Ken now, I think. Is KLC right. Ken. Yep. KLC Ken is what it is. Used to be lawn and landscape, and same, same thing. But yeah, yeah. So we just got a. Uh, Regular hone here. I think this was a Harbor Freight special. I've already used it a couple of times, but as long as we still got some some meat left on the hone, we should be all right. Yep. And I'm uh, just going to use some some thick oil in here just yep. to kind of lube it up a little. Pretty simple. Have you uh, showed what we're dealing with right now? We'll do a I have after. Let me get a let me get a light so you can shine a light in there. So guys, inside this cylinder right here, there's a little bit of a groove in it. Okay, um, it's not terrible, but it's definitely noticeable when you stick your finger in there. You can feel the, the ridge on your finger. So we're going to get a light in here to give you guys a better shot on it. But we're hoping that with this hone, we can work most of it out. Anything that you feel with your finger is usually probably excessive. But if you've got just a little bit, which this one, pretty much right. Yeah, you can see it right there. Yeah, right here. There's a little bit you can feel, so we're going to hope that the majority of that's going to come out. I, I'm be willing to bet when we're done with the home, we might still see a little bit of darkness line right here, but we should be able to get the majority of this out. When Ken told me that this uh, engine block still has a little bit of life left in it, <laughs> I was very excited. Because uh, you guys know, you can't find motors now. If you can find a motor, you're extremely lucky. And, you know, I just wanted to rebuild this one to learn. You know, don't be afraid to tear into things, guys. That's what Ken says, and I watched his video on his rebuild that he did on his walker, and that's what got me to this point. And now I'm standing here next to him learning how to hone a cylinder. Yeah, and for those that don't know, that walker mower over there has got close to 10,000 hours on it, and that's the motor that I rebuilt, uh, I think, back in October-ish for $150 in parts. And uh, it's still running. It's the mower I use every day that I mow. Can't beat that. So and we just checked the oil on it was down maybe a quarter of a quart after uh you know a good 100 hours of use so barely uses any oil so 
So when you're doing this honing thing, I usually just start off really slow. The only thing you want to do is the whole time you're spinning, you don't want to stay in one place. You always want to go up and down, and that's what creates that crosshatch pattern. If you just stayed in the same place and went in a circle, you'd end up cutting like a, a circle groove around, and that could be like a ridge that would wear down your ring. So you always want to never be spinning the hone unless you're going in and out, basically. As soon as you want to stop doing that, let off the trigger because it doesn't take long before you end up with a with a ridge. So okay, we're just gonna yeah, probably go about forty five seconds or so right now, and uh, and see what it looks like. It's gonna take a little bit on this one, so we'll see how it goes. start Let's see what we got so this process is also called deglazing deglazing right? exactly hone deglaze it's actually I think more commonly called deglazing but where you're using a hone kind of just call it honing but so all right Let's see if you can uh, maybe want to lift the camera up a little down at that angle, yeah. So we can see we started taking. Wow, it's I can already feel it better. Feel wow. that? You can still feel it, but it's yep. way less than it was already. It's getting way better. Yeah. So and that was barely any, and you can start to see some light scratching with the cross hatching in the cylinder, which is good. And the reason you want that is when we put new rings in it, if this was perfectly silky smooth, the the rings would never really wear around the edges exactly to mate to the cylinder wall, and it would never really have good compression. It takes that little bit of almost like a sandpaper on the surface to seat the rings in so they really seal nice and tight up against that cylinder wall so but yeah this is uh i think we're gonna we're gonna get some good results with this so that's great a little bit more oil and uh maybe do another minute and see what we got let's get that light going all right so ken just got done finishing the second pass on it i think we've got maybe two and a half minutes total on slow speed on the drill a lot of people always ask that they're like how do you know when you're done well i'll show you how to know it's not really a time thing it's more the results that you're getting you can see a lot better it's lightened up pretty much i don't think there's even a lip anymore there's just a roughness it has a little bit different of a texture than the rest of the cylinder but the rest of that cylinder is almost to the point where it's set. It still needs a little bit more cross hatch. So even if we weren't trying to get this out, I would still want to hone it a little bit more. Everything else is looking pretty good in there. So yeah, that's the worst spot. Yeah, we're gonna be good here. All right. Awesome. Continue on. You can buy good quality ones if you're gonna do this a lot, but, uh, and they have replaceable stones. I think you can replace these ones too, but for the money, it's probably, you know, you don't do this unless you're rebuilding engines every day. <laughs> right. You just buy a new one when you need it. Yep. Looking at this gap right here, we had about 31 thousandths ring gap on a used motor. Which I got a 15 and a 16 together makes 31. Yeah, so we're removing very little material and getting that good of results. Yeah, awesome. All right, well. Oh, 
it's just a little better each time really nothing super exciting to see because we're not taking much material off again because my hone isn't very aggressive if we had more of an aggressive hone probably wouldn't have to hone it as much as we have but but again i've already tried with this ring to see how much we've oh here it is this one here to see how much we've taken off the cylinder and it's not even noticeable on a feeler gauge yet so the way we know that i'm going to place the ring in nice and even Measure that end gap. Still not even any wiggle in it. Maybe a little. We've maybe taken a half of a thousandth in total. So barely any material out of that cylinder wall. So you don't have to be afraid to go in too far. You see, it's a long, pro a long, slow process taking that off. Yep. All right, guys. So just a quick follow up. We got done honing both cylinders. And they came out very, very nice. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera, but it's got a nice cross hatch now on both cylinders. Let me flip this around and show you, show you the other side. Yeah, we got the majority of that depression that was here. You can barely see it now. It's got a little, little bit of a discoloration, but nice and smooth. I think as the ring, the ring seats in, it will finish finish smoothing that out as all the rings get set in from that cross hatch so I feel confident in that and this cylinder was in good shape to begin with but we got a nice cross hatch you can tell yeah very nice, nice. that should work out well consistent throughout so all ready for some new rings in there all right so we're gonna look at the valves next you got those right there all right yeah so next step guys Ken's gonna take a look at the valve train setup in the head make sure everything's good there just to give me some extra assurance when I put this back together. We're probably just gonna do a quick valve lap to reseat the valves and replace the seal. And that'll be about all we'll need to do on that as long as there's no cracks in the head, which we'll find out shortly. Oh, she's dirty, huh? Oh yeah. This did some sitting, so we're gonna have to clean all this up to get a really good look at it, but I don't see any damage to the face of the valves. That's a good sign. Well, we'll do one at a time so we don't mix up our parts. All right. We've got all the bolts still sitting in here. All right. Let me pull this gasket off. So that's what we're starting with. So I'm just going to take a wire wheel and clean that up right there just with the drill. Make sure there's no cracks, then we'll take the valves out. Went to town with the sealer on this stuff. See, that's in the jacket. Mm -hmm. All right, so just kind of stabilize that if you can. Oh yeah, you still got the camera going too? That's good, let me put this right up here. All right. This won't take much. be careful because this is aluminum and with a wire wheel you can go too far and remove some of that aluminum you don't want to do that now um, can i reuse those head bolts i usually re you i usually reuse the head bolts on these motors yes uh, they probably say that you should replace them um, but these are low compression engines uh, very low failure rate on the head bolts um, i think it's worth reusing them i would clean the threads mm -hmm. maybe on a wire wheel to make yep. sure they're really clean which they are actually in good shape and uh unless it had overheated and blew a head gasket then i might consider replacing them but i i do reuse most of the time unless i have a reason not to so wow look at the, how much gasket material is in here it's crazy do you huh? see this yeah this is like horrible you don't need this much they put way too much on. I think they squashed it down before they gave it a chance to set up, too. Well, this this is usually, there's just a, oh, there's not even in here. There's usually a little O-ring gasket that goes in here. And they just used whatever, some type of sealer. So there's a little rubber mm -hmm. O-ring that goes around here, and you don't need any sealer. 
just clean this all out and put the rubber o-ring on here and it seals nice right up against this this is horrible because what happens is this stuff goes down inside the motor and then that's why your pickup on your oil pump was clogged up yep because it got this, stuck right through the engine yep, all this stuff you got to get all of this off yeah so they say rebuilt it it sounds like whoever did it wasn't very experienced mm -hmm. this is like way overkill Look at all that. So, well, you, you already said you're going to take some time and get all this cleaned up. Mm -hmm. Whatever it takes to screwdrivers, whatever, just a little bit of time. And get all that out nice and clean. But, so, just looking for any discoloration or any cracks. They can be microscopic cracks that we can't see, but usually not in these motors they're usually pretty good heads so we're just going to pull the valves out and see <clears throat> a test you can do to see if a valve is sealing pop properly i usually use gas and you can fill up the top of the cylinder this is wd-40 but you can see if it holds usually i do this after i would lap the valves but we can try it right now just to see and then you let it sit for like 15 minutes 20 minutes and see if that actually goes down if it does that means the it's there's a leak between the valves mm -hmm. so i just did that to demonstrate it if you just didn't want to rebuild your valves and you were just going with it if it holds fluid like that like i said you could use gas and it doesn't go down that means your valves are sealing properly but we have it apart anyways so we're going to pull them off and get a visual so Got to move these rockers out of the way and we just got a tool to pull that off. I'm going to keep these in the order that we take them off. Spark plugs this way. And there is a torque spec that's very important when you put those on. I believe it's 13 or 16 foot pounds. Very small amount. I'm just going to push down on this and you'll see these two little wedges they'll just kind of like pop up you're just going to grab them with that magnet and just pull them right up all you want to do is make sure you got something underneath so the valve doesn't push down with it there's one you got one yep, yep. You can grab the other one come on pretty strong magnet eh? Yeah, I guess so. Mm -hmm. There's two. Hold it up. That's all there is to it. And this is the side that has the seal. This valve won't have a seal in it. So whereabouts the seal? Right here? That is the seal right there, yep. Okay. You just pry it right off. It'll just lift right up. A lot of times they'll be really hard and, and uh, brittle. This one actually feels like it's still rubberized because this we believe that this was a rebuilt motor. Yeah, that actually is still sealing good, nice and tight. But see how it still has a rubber consistency. So this one isn't bad, but We're while you're in here, it's it's a good idea to replace mm -hmm. it. But I mean that is nice and that's a nice tight seal. Like if you didn't replace them or if you didn't have them, I wouldn't worry about this on this in this case. But I mean they're literally like a dollar a piece so now we're pulling the this is the intake valve so what we would want to do here is just kind of clean up any of the debris in here and we want to inspect the valve These so what are we looking are for in the real, valve? really good shape well first of all we want to see if they're bent and by doing that we can roll it but we know it's not bent because this one was sealing but we're looking for any type of like pitting it would be obvious chunks any pitting nastiness on this valve this has got a nice even smooth ring all the way around this is the surface that we're worried about that shiny area right there mm -hmm. and when that connects to this 45 degree angle here that's the valve seat so all we need to do is give this a good clean you see how it's nice and shiny like that that's how we want we want a nice thick ring just like that on the valve and on there and what we're going to do is use a little valve grinding compound it's almost like toothpaste and Spin this back and forth a few times. 
and then put the valve back in. That's all we have to do. Very simple. This one's in good shape. What I do is I connect the end of the drill to that. And there was one person one time that told me the little tiny bit of the downside possibility of doing it this way. And I don't remember what it was because it wasn't that important. So I can't disprove it and I can't agree with it. So until I'm told differently, I have had 100% success doing it the way I'm about to do it. This is just that toothpaste valve grinding compound I was talking about, but it's kind of old. So it's dried up at the end. There we go. So we just need to get a little, a little bit on there. Yeah. Okay. Slide that in. Now, is that the valve guide that you just slid it into? Exactly. That's the valve guide, and see how it's like kind of tight going in there that means there's no excess play that's nice and tight no problem you do not have to replace that so I know you mentioned asking me about that right because those are pressed into the head right yeah usually they're just pressed right and not even that tight you can usually get them out just with a hammer and a punch but again on these colors I've never really seen an issue so what I do is I use the drill connected to the valve just to spin it like that and then just use something like this to apply a little pressure. In a couple directions. Disconnect it. Take it back out. See how it has a nice light gray bead all the way around. And then when we clean this off, this should also see how you have a nice consistent silver ring all the way around on both the valve and the seat. So you just want to clean off that compound, make sure it's really clean. And you're going to still clean up this head anyways, but mm -hmm. this is just getting the valves set. And then, boom, now we know we got a nice seal. And we'll have no leaks by that. Now that was easy. These valves are in good shape, so it didn't take much. You honestly would have been fine not doing that, but nothing nothing wrong with making it uh, a little bit better all right guys so we got the heads done uh ken showed me how the valve train is set up inside of the head we relapped the valve so those are good now um everything looked good the push rods were good the valves themselves were good nothing funky going on um so the only thing we have to do now is get it back home get it all cleaned up so it's spick and span and then we can start reassembly yeah, and his job is pretty much do a really good cleaning on it and uh, use the proper gaskets and torque sets, torque specs. Mm -hmm. He's got a manual, so he's all set there. Yep. And uh, hopefully we'll see a follow-up video with it running. Yes, hopefully. Not smoking, not leaking <laughs> oil. That's the, whole, that's the whole plan is to have it run and not and do then, anything funky and blow up or do anything like that. But. Exactly, and let's see how long <laughs> it runs for. See if we can get a couple thousand hours out of it. Right. If right. not, hey... We'll see. I think uh, I feel pretty good about it. Very confident. It's yeah. uh, it should be about as good as any of the other ones I did, and I had good results. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, for the condition and the age of the motor, um, Ken verified that it's in good shape, so that makes me feel better. Yeah. Um, I'm not as hesitant to dive into it and put it back together now. I'm glad I came down here to his shop, and I'm super thankful for the time that he took out of his day to help me out with this. No problem. Um, Guys, if you haven't checked out his channel yet, I highly suggest you do. KLC yep. Ken, check him out on YouTube. He's got a great channel. It's very informative. He goes through all sorts of stuff, guys. Walkers, engines, 
Well, anything yep. to do with uh, lawn care. Motorcycles and stuff, too. I'm doing all kinds of different stuff. Yep, but. yep. He's very talented. Yeah. Um, check him out. I'm just persistent. Yep. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> yep. So. But, all right. Yeah, sounds good. Well, thank I you very much. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate you coming down. Yeah, and, uh, glad anytime. Glad we were able to do a little video together and whatnot. Yeah, the next time I'll come down, I'll come down with the mower. We'll have to drive him around. Yeah. Do like some we said, mowing. we were talking about we might work together someday and go out and mow a few lawns and yeah. see how that goes. So. Yeah. Well, I All appreciate right. you guys taking the time out of your day to tune in. It's going to wrap it up for this video. I'll see you on the next portion of the build. Talk to you soon. All right. Have a good one, guys.